Hello, my name is Jeff Gomez. I'm the host of Self-Inflicted Oral Nostalgia, a fan's Guided by Voices podcast. I'm also the author of Zeppelin Over Dayton, Guided by Voices, album by album, which you can buy wherever books are sold. I uh, want to do a video today talking about my top 10 favorite Guided by Voices tracks. This is not easy. They've got hundreds of songs. Pollard, as a songwriter, has written thousands. Uh, but these are what these, these are my top ten favorite tracks of uh, GBV singles, EPs, and records. Uh, you know, again, these are my own personal choices. I'd love to hear in the comments what yours are. Uh, my selections run the gamut from the band's earliest days to their most uh, recent work. Um, so really, a great vast discography to choose from. A lot of fun to really go through all the records, EPs, and singles to listen to all these really really great tracks. Uh, but these are my top ten. It takes the sunrise. It takes the light of cohesive scoops. All right, kicking off the list at number 10 with Cohesive Scoops from 2019's Warp and Woof, uh, a really fine record made up of songs that had appeared on four EPs. Um, super short songs, uh, Cohesive Scoops, super poppy, classic, short pop song. Uh, another great track on this record that almost made the list was My Angel. Um, subject matter wise, I think it's about Pollard's cats, not too sure. Um, it's the most recent thing on my list, uh, showing just how strong this uh, this new classic lineup is. Uh, but again, as I was sort of looking through the last couple of LPs, there were a number of strong tracks that uh, jumped out at me. Rally Boys was another uh, recent favorite that almost made the list. Um, and so this has got kind of a, um, this record's got kind of a B-1000 Adeline Lanes vibe. A lot of uh, short songs recorded uh, on tour in the back of vans and things like that. And yet uh, still has really great production. They've come a long way from their four track early days. Uh, and Cohesive Scoops is just a, a super great track. So it comes in at number 10 on my list. Someone tell me why I do the things that I Coming in at number nine, we've got Teenage FBI, the lead song off of 1999's Do the Collapse. This is, of course, the uh, record that was produced by Rick Okasik. Uh, some people feel that's too produced. I actually love the little kind of new wave touches he gave to some of these songs, Teenage FBI being one of them. It's got kind of a, a Devo vibe on there. Um, just really anthemic, really strong. Pollard's voice just sounds great. Again, it was really great to hear him recorded so well after years of uh, being in the basement. Um, again, pretty strong record. Things I Will Keep, Hold On Hope. I know that's a controversial track. Uh, but for me, the lead off track, Teenage FBI, is just a, a, a Stellar, stellar song. That's what comes in at number nine on my list. Coming in at number eight, we've got The Best of Jill Hives off of 2003's Earthquake Glue. Uh, I struggled with what to put in this spot for a while when I was making out the list. I had Glad Girls in this, uh, in this spot. You know, a great anthemic pop song from uh, Isolation Drills, follow up to Do the Collapse. And then in the end, I just had to go with uh, Jill Hives. It's such a, a subtle, kind of haunting track telling the tale of an Eleanor Rigby esque lonely woman character. Um, uh, you know, great song of a pretty strong record. Uh, not the single, although they did make a video for the song, which is kind of hard to find, but if you search it on YouTube, you can certainly find it. Uh, but a great sort of mid-fi, mid-tempo song. Um, it's the only song I've included from that second round of Matador Records, and it's really just a favorite, which is why Best of Jill Hives comes in at number eight on my list. Coming in at number seven, we've got The Other Place from their band's very first release, their uh, 1986 EP, Forever Since Breakfast. Uh, it's the final track on the EP. Um, really interesting time for the band. They really didn't have the sound that they would have later. Uh, it's very sort of REM influenced, very jangly. Uh, what's also interesting about this song is all the, the song's structure. It's got a verse, chorus, middle eight, break, uh, showing that even early on in his career, Pollard knew all the parts to a pop song. Um, instead, you know, when he when it has songs be, you know, two minutes long, or a minute and a half long. It's not that he doesn't know, you know how to write a pop song, he just doesn't choose to do it like that. Uh, another thing that's interesting about the lyrics here are they're very sort of uh, realistic, socially conscious. Um, Pollard not really exhibiting his penchant for wordplay or surrealism that he would have later. Um, in the song he sings, who am I to argue the words of our prominent leaders? A little boy stepping in front of his mom when his dad starts to beat her. Again, sort of, you know, very sort of kitchen sink realism that the band really wouldn't return to, you know, almost ever. Um, and yet, really anthemic track, just sounds great. 
Um, you know, the band wouldn't really sound that produced for another, you know, 15 years almost. Um, and it's a, an early release that, again, again, doesn't sound like a lot of the band's later stuff, but I come back to this EP uh, quite a lot because I just, I think it's really, really fantastic. So coming at number seven, we've got The Other Place. Woke up one morning, saw a Coming at number six, we've got Don't Stop Now off of Under the Bushes, Under the Stars from 1996. Uh, this is the only song I'm choosing from that first round of Matador Records. Uh, you know, probably a bit of a predictable choice. This is a pretty, you know, big and popular song by the band, but, you know, I don't care. It is just such a, a great and strong song off of a record that's got a lot of really great tracks. I almost chose uh, Redmen and Their Wives. Um, official Iron Man Rally song, almost chose a Toby track, and I'm actually sad to say that there's not a, a Tobin Sprout song in my top 10 list, but Tour Make the Young Flyer almost comes close. Um, you know, this is one of the tracks that was produced by uh, Kim Deal down in Tennessee uh, when the band started to uh, make the record with her, but they then, you know, bailed after a, a short time to go back to Ohio and kind of do the record in, the, in their own sort of usual way. Um, one of their great sort of mission statement songs, you know, you could, you could, you could take Don't Stop Now to be the band's kind of unofficial slow Logan, um, but it's just a really, really great song. Starts very slow, builds to a, a really cathartic end, and in the end, just becomes just a, a really, really great, strong song by the band. Um, that's why it comes at number six on my list. Come here, number five. We've got Shocker in Gloomtown from the 1993 EP The Grand Hour. Um, Kind of the record that started it all for the band. Um, they'd been toiling in obscurity for a decade. Uh, Scat Records finally began to sort of officially put out their records in 93, starting with this uh, this uh, EP, Led to Vampire and Titus, in the following year, 1994. B-Thousand came out and really opened the floodgates to, uh, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of records and EPs that would follow in the next couple of years. Shocker and Gloomtown, super short track, super aggressive, almost kind of like punk rock. It's a minute and 26 seconds. Uh, the Breeders, speaking of Kim Deal, later covered this and made a video that actually had the band in it, so brought the song to even wider attention. Um, the subject matter is the band getting big, and there's the message in there, you know, uh, how the hell did we miss this? And that was something that Gerard Costloy from Matador Records later said when he discovered the band and uh, knew they'd been around for, you know, uh, a number of years and had some records out. And that was the thought on the scene was, how could these guys be toiling away at obscurity when they were just so good and had put out so many records on their own. How did nobody hear of this band? And yet now, with this EP, people were starting to hear from the band and it'd really only be the beginning. Coming at number four, we've got the opening track, Space Gun, off the record, Space Gun. Uh, you know, contrast this with Shocker and Gloomtown, number five. This is uh, over four minutes long. Uh, you know, that's, I think it's like four minutes and 18 seconds. That's practically half a side of the whole Grand Hour EP. So, uh, you know, really long track. You know, I love it when the band stretches out a bit instrumentally. Uh, this is when the new classic lineup was really hitting its stride. And so just to hear Doug Gillard, Mark Shu, Bobby Bear Jr., Kevin March, uh, to hear these guys just stretch out on a track and um, uh, sound so good with producer Travis Harrison is just a real treat. And I absolutely love this song, love this record. It's a great video. Um, and I just couldn't believe how strong the material was from the band coming out of uh, 2017, 2018, uh, and really just continuing to this day. This new classic lineup is just producing really, really great stuff. And I think it really, really starts with this song on this record, Space Gun, coming in at number four. Coming in at number three, we've got the title track to 2012's Class Clown Spots, a UFO. Uh, it's the only song I've included from any of the reunion records, even though those albums had a number of standout tracks. Uh, Let's Go Eat the Factories, two singles, Donut First Snowman, Unsinkable Fats Domino, really great songs, but this is the one I come back to over and over again. As I said in the Worst of Best video, what I think was lost during all of those years when the band tried to sound like The Who was kind of that lighter psychedelic side where they really, you know, tried to sound like The Beatles. And this is a very Beatles-esque psychedelic track that I just, I just love. Um, it's made a number of appearances throughout the band's history. It was part of a longer song cycle that I'll talk about in a second. There's also a slower kind of acoustic version, which is the final song on King Shit and the Golden Boys called Crocker's Favorite Song. Uh, but again, Class Clown spots a UFO. Really great psychedelic track. Comes in at number three on my list. Why is it every 
All right, I just knew I had to choose something off of B-1000, and I'm going with the Tractor Rape Chain off the band's 1994 record, although really, you know, almost could have gone with anything on this first side. Buzzers and Dreadful Crows, Gold Heart Mountaintop Queen Directory, Hot Freaks, Smothered and Hugs, Echoes Myron. Uh, you know, it's not even talking about uh, uh, second side stuff. Gold Star for Rubber Boy, Queens of Cans and Jars, and yet, even though this is my favorite overall GBV record, does not have my favorite song of all time. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, Tractor Rape Chain is a song that had been around for a while. It made its first appearance as a song called Tell Me, uh, which you can hear on Suitcase 4. The acoustic intro is from a track called South Rap Observatory, which you can hear on Suitcase 3. There's a version, like a six-minute version, on the Darla 100 box set, so a look for that on YouTube. Uh, again, you know, made many appearances, but the one that really just hits at home is what's included here on B1000. Um, super anthemic, just super, just really great song. Never get tired of hearing it, even though I've been, you know, listening to the song for almost, you know, 25, 26 years. Uh, and that's why Tractor Rape Chain comes in at number two on my list. Okay, not a lot of suspense if you've read the book or you watched the Worst to Best video, but my all-time favorite Guided by Voices track is the lead song off of 1992's Propeller over the Neptune Mesh Gear Fox. Uh, I just love this song. It's anthemic. It's dynamic. It starts big and kind of gets small. It's uh, really romantic in places. It's got violin. Um, it was the best the band had been recorded for uh, up till this point. Uh, you know, even their 8-track and garage recordings and 4-track. You know, this record actually that was done on 24-track and it just sounds huge. The band just sounds great, and I, I just love this track. Um, the first time I heard it was when I really first fell in love with the band. Um, this was the first I'd heard the band, 1983's Vampire and Titus, which I had on CD. Um, didn't really like Vampire Titus. It was too lo-fi for me, but, you know, Scat put on this whole other record, um, and I sort of skipped forward to Propeller, not liking Vampire and Titus, and just hearing over the Neptune, Mishkir Fox just hooked me for the band and really started this, you know, love affair that I've been in for three decades now. Um, it had been part of a really long track called Special Astrology for the Warlock Tour. It's an 11-minute multi-part song. Um, what's included in Propeller is really just the first two parts. Uh, there's another part, Circus World, which is another song on uh, Propeller. Uh, and then there's even a sort of uh, uh, an early version of a Class Clown Spots a UFO, which is part of that track. Another thing I love about this song is that uh, opening, the, you know, this song does not rock and the GBV chant, that was completely faked in the studio. Now that stage banter is real, that was taken from a song which you can hear on 2005's Briefcase, it's called Lion with Thorn and Paw. Um, but the, at the time, the band really wasn't even a band, they did not have any fans, local or otherwise, um, and so all that chanting, all the crowd noise was completely faked in the studio by Pollard and the guys. And yet what I love about this band is that that dream has become real, that chant, that GVV, you go to shows and you hear that now. So, you know, Pollard, through sheer force of will, luck, and just being a, you know, really talented guy over the years, putting in the work, has made that dream real. This is a fake band that now has real fans, and it all starts with um, Over the Neptune, Mesh Gear Fox. It's also a great statement. Uh, mission statement song from the band that throw the switch it's rock and roll time really gets to the heart of that uh, you know good time rock band that GBV is um, and so it just really fits in among their best songs and for me this is my all-time favorite Guide of Voices track over the Neptune Mesh Gear Fox Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed hearing my top 10 favorite Guided by Voices tracks. Leave in the comments your own top 10 lists. Um, I want to also say goodbye. I'm not going to be doing any more episodes of the uh, GBB podcast. I'm not going to make any more videos. I've been doing this project for three years. Figure it's time to call it quits. Visit everygbvlp.com to listen to podcast episodes covering all the band's studio records, number of bonus episodes. Uh, pick up the book, Zeppelin Over Dayton. Guide by Voices, album by album. You can drop me a line, email me at jeff at everygbvlp.com. Otherwise, thanks for listening.